This is you. And if you've been following gerrymandering at all over the past few years, you've probably heard of the efficiency gap. The efficiency gap has become a popular way of measuring gerrymandering or otherwise stated telling you how fairly you are represented in your state's legislature. To understand the efficiency gap, let's take a detour into what is known as proportional representation. Say this is your state, and these are the districts in your state. You vote for your state house member while others vote for their state house members. Proportional representation is the idea that if your party wins a certain percentage of the vote in your state, to be fair, your party should have a proportionate number of seats in your state house. Then everyone in your state, including you, is equally represented. This does not always happen. Naturally, there are fluctuations, and sometimes these fluctuations are not natural. When district lines are redrawn so one party is overrepresented in government, it is called political gerrymandering. And political gerrymandering was declared unconstitutional in 1986 by the U.S. Supreme Court. But surprisingly, in the 31 years since, a political gerrymandering case has never been successfully tried, even though quite disproportionate states have been brought to trial. Why is this? Well, the Supreme Court has also ruled that proportional representation is not constitutionally guaranteed, which means that no matter how obvious a gerrymander may be, a judge will not allow an argument such as, it is unfair that their party was elected to 60% of the legislative seats while they received only 50% of the vote. This is a seats votes argument, also known as an argument based on proportional representation. And as stated, these arguments are not allowed in the courts. This is where the efficiency gap comes in. The efficiency gap measures how likely it is that a state has been gerrymandered and the courts have accepted the efficiency gap because they do not look at it as a measure of proportionality. But what does the efficiency gap actually measure? It measures wasted votes. Wasted votes come from the concept that the winner of this election did not need all of these excess votes. They needed only enough to win. And the loser did not need any of their votes because the loser lost. So the votes are considered wasted. Every district statewide will have wasted votes from both parties. These wasted votes will vary from district to district, but when combined as a statewide total, they tell an important story. In a fair election, each political party should have the same number of wasted votes. If there is a difference, that difference is the efficiency gap, as one party has been more efficient than the other in minimizing their wasted votes. Through this wasted votes method, the efficiency gap has struck a chord with the public and with the courts. And over the years, the efficiency gap has been used to measure legislative elections in every state of the union and the nation as a whole. But in a recently published paper titled, The Equal District's Efficiency Gap, Fundamental Gerrymandering Theory and an Analysis and Modification of the Efficiency Gap, it is shown that the efficiency gap can be calculated not by using wasted votes as has been done to date, but by using an equation of only two variables. And these two variables are the percentage of seats won by a party and the percentage of votes won by that party. In other words, the paper shows that the efficiency gap is a measure of proportional representation. In fact, this type of seats votes equation is widespread in today's literature and its origins can be traced back to 1973 when scientists were first beginning to understand the relationship between seats and votes. With that new knowledge that the efficiency gap is actually a measure of proportional representation, it is very likely that the courts will no longer hear it as part of an argument. The paper goes on to say that the wasted votes calculations that have been going on all these years are actually biased. Even the results presented to the courts are wrong and need to be adjusted. So what does this mean? What will happen to our efficiency gap? Does it have a future? It does. The efficiency gap may not be allowed in the courts, but it has brought the issue of gerrymandering to the public and will continue to do so. It can help determine how well your state performs, whether historically in relation to other states or from election to election. It will remain doing what it does, showing the disparity between seats and votes.